Hello, everyone. Welcome to Popcast on the Rocks, episode 81. This is a podcast where we talk about pop culture things that we enjoy, and sometimes there's whiskey. My name is John. I am joined once again by Andrea. <laughs> that was a great dramatic pause. I was like, ooh, yeah. like he could be <laughs> anyone. He's... <laughs> is it me? I hope so. It is. <laughs> well, that's great. Yes, you're always here. How is it? How's your week been? Busy, busy. Um, you know, we just, I mean, we just saw each other not too long ago, uh, which is great. I uh, had an excellent Halloween, first Halloween for my daughter, who dressed up as her namesake, the Pokemon Eevee. Um, nice. And we put out a little Facebook poll to see which evolution she should go as next year, because there's so many oh. to choose from. Yeah, somebody suggested well. that. And I was like, oh, my God, that's brilliant. I didn't even think that far ahead. But yeah, we got a Halloween costume for like nine years. OK, <laughs> <laughs> there are that many evolutions. Well, there are quite a few. I mean, there's like the Vaporeon, suppose, Jolteon, yeah. Flareon, Leafeon, Sylveon, Espeon, Umbreon. Okay, I think I got to seven. And then um, you have, oh, let's see, is there a, a Lohan variant at all? I don't think there is, right? I don't think so. Okay, so I got to seven, not nine, but still. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, solid number of years. So. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so somebody somebody <laughs> voted that uh, she should be Vaporeon because I was Misty. Um, we dressed yeah. up as Ash and Misty, and Misty, of course, specializes in water Pokemon. I was like, well, mm -hmm. done. <laughs> That's fair. By the time you're getting to the later ones, she's going to be like, I don't oh, want to be his Pokemon anymore. She's, yeah, you're going to make her hate Pokemon. She's not going to want to do I know. I know. With you really. This is like the danger of introducing your kids to thing you, things you love. It's like, oh, my God, they're either going to love it, too, or you're going to overexpose them. And they're going to be like, this is the worst. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll yep. see. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Did you like is she too young? bother with trick-or-treating kind of i suppose yeah yeah i mean sort of things like that we drove her around to you know people's houses and kind of like basically showed off her costume mm -hmm. um and she was fascinated by candy but really <laughs> it was it was about the wrapper because they were yeah. colorful and made crinkly noise mm -hmm. so yeah. she just like all night just kind of like played with a reese's in her hands and was just like smushing it up and crinkling it and it was just the best so, <laughs> you know nice. i mean that's a good way to you know if you bring that forward in the future and not gain too much weight you just you just smush your reese's <laughs> right and play I with mean, it yeah just yeah. have a have a grand old time just you know like smushing it up in your fist and yep entertainment <laughs> for days i'm telling you nice cool all right well you get any other halloween ish activities in or no um, not really um, we, I mean, we went so out. Fast. Yeah, I know. I, I felt like October, like leading up to Halloween, it was like so much time. It's so much time. And then boom, um, you know, probably much like any holiday, really. But um, we did get out to like a pumpkin patch and got pumpkins to carve and things like that. Did not actually end up carving them because mm. we had no time. But mm -hmm. they're they're sitting on our stoop right now uncarved, but festive ish. Yeah, I was the same. I actually got pumpkins for us and uh, she and Val Nuke carved them, but I was working. So mine uh, sat uncarved. Uncarved. But, yeah. Yep. Yep. But yep. It's all right. It happens. So, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be something, you know, now next Halloween, there'll still be something new for her to do a new experience. You know, yep. playing we with haven't... pumpkin guts. Exactly. Smush them up in your hands, yep. man. It's a great mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So, yep. yep. <laughs> well, I didn't go trick or treating um, either, you know, mm -hmm. um, the opposite end of that spectrum, I suppose. But I did get in on some other Halloween kinds of things. Excellent. Um, What'd you do? So it's been mostly in the form of video games this last week or whatever. Um, whatever it's been now, week and a half, mm -hmm. something. And. <laughs> So I played some Back for Blood a little bit. Nice. Um, How's that? And stuff. Um, it's good. I like it. It's a lot of mm -hmm. fun. So I had heard okay. things initially going into it that maybe was um, disappointing in some way, but I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So 
Um, and then Dead by Daylight. Melissa was uh, playing that randomly a couple weeks ago or whatever. And okay. I just asked her how it was, and she liked it a lot. And it was on sale for Halloween and stuff. So I picked that up and played played a few rounds um, with her on that now. And mm-hmm. it's cool. They were doing like a Stranger Things crossover and Resident Evil and different things in there. And um, basically, you go online and you're a team of four. Mm-hmm. And then there's one other person that is a horror villain. And so they have, will have like Jason or like different made up ones. And I don't think they can like call them their names usually, but it, clearly that's what it is. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so one person plays that person and has, has to stalk and capture all the other people. And mm-hmm. the other people have to meanwhile, try to run around and repair these um, like, I don't know, generators. Mm-hmm. and um and then escape in time okay but as a survivor you get other things you can do but you can't you, you really can't attack or anything like that um right. you're just helpless basically and the killers <laughs> okay. are faster than you and all that stuff so so but, i mean pretty much like the first like you know five sixths of any horror movie and then suddenly at the end like the victim can like fight back and do something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's 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 a good time. So, yeah. Uh, Dune came out the other week, so I got yeah. Dune watched. That mm-hmm. um, I was happy about. It's like squeezing in between work, but yeah, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about Dune at some point. Absolutely. But, but how could we? Was, how could we not? After I compared Stellan Skarsgård to a pale, floaty vampire. I mean, yeah, we were talking you know. about it pre-show and just, um, you know be nice to see it again. It's a lot going mm-hmm. on. It's a pretty long, a long, film. long movie. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but for all that, um, I mean, I'm not going to get too far into it and drag us to, of course, uh, it has done well. And that I'm interested to see if that means good things for HBO max as well, or if this is, right. you know, Purely if this theater. is going to, tra- yeah, if this is going to be like a translation for them into subscribers and like, this is finally, you know, the thing, um or yeah like you said if it's really you know theater yep yep well uh speaking of hbo max and mm-hmm. all that stuff we're going to be talking some streaming things coming up some mm-hmm. star wars i mean we got to get in our weekly kawi bebop netflix show thing <laughs> or something and then some more um some more video games things so it's just going to be yeah. uh, basically a news story someone will be a little bit delayed from when it originally came out so Mm -hmm. but maybe you'll hear a new take on it but before we get there yeah i mentioned sometimes there's whiskey up top (laughs) i don't think there's gonna be any whiskey tonight but no there's something else we got some drink holidays yeah no tonight is uh it's kind of all about the classics no spirits uh beer and wine um so this week it is um we are midway through or a little past uh world sherry week which started on november 1st and runs through this sunday the 7th i can't like remember if i've ever had sherry um Mm. but it's something like as a victorianist i encounter all the time in like the novels that i read Mm. you know people having like glasses of sherry um so at one point uh, quite quite a popular drink now i feel like i only talk about it when you need to cook with it like cooking yeah. sherry so yeah um not yeah. not a huge fan but it is world sherry week if you are um yesterday it was international stout day um i'm not typically a fan of a stout beer i always find it like so filling um mm-hmm. but i've had i've had a, a few good stouts in in my time um but i am celebrating the other uh holiday that's happening this week on the 7th which is international Merlot day. So cheers with my glass of Merlot. What have you got going on, John? Um, I have what I thought was close to a stout. All our Mm. stouts are basically not, um, refrigerated (laughs) and they're like (laughs) special bottles, you know? So it's like, I could have opened one up, but I wasn't going to drink it myself. So, yeah. so I have a porter. It's called a. Uh, someone brought this to the Halloween party. I don't know who. 
death by coconut death by coconut yeah yeah focus focus yeah death by coconut <laughs> there it is um oscar blues brewing company uh irish style porter brewed with coconut and chocolate how Ooh. can you go wrong that sounds like the beer version of like a halloween candy bar like yeah, right like a mars That's bar good. or an almond joy or whatever yep mm -hmm. yeah there you go how is it it's good it's tasty i'm a fan Tastes Alan, like coconut? did you bring this? Um, let's see. <laughs> um, it does. Yes, actually. Okay. All right. Um, I'm guessing this was Tara. Tara Not Brad Alan. No. Um, should you know what I should have done though? Mm -hmm. Though this is delicious. I feel like I should have made a um, like a Guy Fox like cocktail. Mm. We're recording on the 5th of November. Yeah. I don't know. Could have been something fun there. Dang, that would have been fun. Yeah. Next year. Show mm -hmm. notes for next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we got some drinks. We're celebrating being festive. Mm -hmm. um, we might as well celebrate Apple TV's continued rollout of seemingly quality content i don't know i mean i haven't watched the, watched these yet but they look good and i want to mm -hmm. see them um so this week uh slash maybe even last week several shows came out right um invasion mm -hmm. which aliens um and um sam o'neill mm -hmm. so how could you go wrong promising, right dr brain this one i hadn't heard coming out at all i hadn't heard nothing about it yeah i was just gonna say like i've heard nothing about this so what is it i uh, so the vague bit that i know is okay. it is a korean show okay. that is this scientist that is like combing through memories he's like has some device or something i don't i don't know if his family died or what the, the case is but he's like putting on this thing combing through memories and it's getting really like seemingly lost in them and reality is getting funny like mm. and it's being confused with what's what's happening and i don't know there's shows sure. it seems like there's all kinds of trippy things happening in this because he's entering all these weird memories is, is what i seem to recall from the synopsis so sure yeah no i'm just looking at what alan threw up here on our chat um and yeah i mean it kind of it's very interesting. It feels like a compilation of like kind of several different, um, you know, like science fiction movies. Like my first thought was like altered carbon, um, you know, like sinking with the mm. dead to like access their memories. Um, but yeah, this is, this seems really interesting. Yeah. It's got one of the people from parasite in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the actors, and um oh i see invasion is not reviewing particularly well on here uh it's mm -hmm. on imdb but we shall see and then the director i think was also known for some stuff i was trying to anyways it came out of nowhere i hadn't yeah. heard anything about it and i thought it looked pretty promising and then also um finch yeah tom, tom hanks movie um where he's got like a robot and a dog so i don't know <laughs> how that is and he's either, just but... tom hanks <laughs> yeah maybe um that would be that'd be fine too i suppose so i don't know a big release all of a sudden of things are you gonna mm -hmm. check any of these out or anything for sure must watches for you on your list um well i mean dr brain actually seems now very interesting that I'm mm -hmm. that I'm learning a little bit more about this. So I might uh I might check that out now. I was planning to watch Invasion. Um yeah, I yeah. just feel like I, I love anything with Sam Neill and yeah. the premise seemed good. Um I'm not particularly bothered if if IMDB isn't rating it super well right now, but sure. That's all right. Well, thick kings in the chat. Hey, the thick king has returned. Welcome. He has arrived. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I also I still haven't started Squid Games. I haven't done that, so I'm behind <gasps> on TV. Like there's you a lot must. of TV 
to happen I d- right now. I did have to like go back because Chris was like, how dare you? How dare you start this without me? And I was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's a familiar situation. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Well, then, because then I did it to him because he started ghosts without me. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're going back. I wanted to watch ghosts. this, too. So it's a CBS show. Um, and it's got Rose McIver or Iver. Um, she was the lead in iZombie. Um, and then... Oh my gosh, I know his name, but I'm going to like mess it up. But anyway, the the plot is um, that she and her husband, MacGyver, thank you. Okay, I was right the first time. I just second guess myself. Um, she and her husband inherit like an estate from a uh, great, great aunt who passes away. And they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to like take it and fix it up and make it like, you know, a and b and it's going to be so much fun. Um and then during the renovation process, she like falls and hits her head and dies for a few minutes and then, you know, is resuscitated and comes back. And when she comes back to the estate, she finds that she can see all the ghosts who are haunting that estate. Mm-hmm. And they're like, they can communicate because she was dead for a couple of minutes. So she can like see and hear them. Um, and they can communicate with her, but nobody else can see them. So it's just like wacky hijinks of like, Hey, there are like eight ghosts haunting this estate and they all died mm-hmm. at like wildly different times. Like there's a Viking, there's a chick who died at like Woodstock, you know, there's like a present day kind of, you know, Boy Scout troop leader. There's a 1920s jazz singer. Like, yeah. Well, that's it's, better than just like, oh, they were in old timey clothes. Like, right, like right. Ghost sightings always seem to be, oh, they're in a flowy white dress. Exactly. Like Civil War era garb, you know, or it's like it's always the same. Yeah. So like they've definitely got a variety and then they've got like basement ghosts who are clearly some sort of like culty thing that went wrong. And there's like a bunch of them who died in an explosion. Um, so it's, so it's like multiple levels of like she can talk to the ghosts. Um, and then there's like the upstairs ghosts and the downstairs, like, you know, like we don't talk mm-hmm. about the boiler room cult victim ghosts. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool. It's pretty fun. I actually really like it. I thought it was going to be cheesy, but it's not bad. Did you ever keep watching Why the Last Man? I have. Yeah. I'm I think I'm only like an episode or two farther than I was. Um, OK, so I'm I'm by no means caught up to where I think the show is. Which okay, I, I think, think it, I think it got the axe. I think it's done. Oh, I don't no. think they're going to keep going. So I just was Bummer. wondering what your impression was. If it was still like enjoyable or what? Yeah, I mean, up to what I've been watching, it really has been. So I'm kind of bummed hmm. out about that. OK. Um, more television yet. Uh, not Apple TV Plus in this case. Mm-hmm. You threw this in your new Wheel of Time trailer. So yeah. I don't know anything about Wheel of Time <gasps> myself. It's, so you know, it's good. been brought up. I think it's many books. It is many, and they are long. Okay. I was listening to some podcast or uh, Xbox guy that was saying how a couple weeks, a few weeks ago, he had to take a break from gaming to finish this series because mm-hmm. he started as a kid or whatever mm-hmm. and never wanted to finish it. So it would just never be done. And he's like, okay, I finally have to do it. Yep. And he did. And then felt empty and hollow for quite a while. You know, <laughs> it's just, he's like, it's like emotional for him because I guess it was everything he wanted it to be. Oh, that's good. But, okay. But at the same time, now it, this epic thing that's been part of my life for so long is done. Is over. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. It's, it's so many things like, that's so many of our stories, I feel like, because this this series is insanely long. Like, if you take a break from it, even just for a little bit, like, it's so hard to go back. You have to, like, restart the entire thing over because the books are so lengthy. So much happens in them. I mean, it's like, it's honestly like A Song of Fire and Ice to the max. You okay. know what I mean? Like, um... There's not Robert Jordan doesn't have as many characters, but like so much happens to them that you just like every book is just like you can't step away for a second or you're going to forget like half the things that are super important. So, yeah. So and I mean, it's so lengthy 
that unfortunately Robert Jordan passed away uh, before ever being able to finish the series. Um, but it was carried on by his son and another writer. Um, kind of also like a little Tolkien esque, I guess. Um, but right. yeah, it's it's really great. I love this series. Would highly recommend it, but only if you've got a lot of time Years. on your hands. Okay. Yeah, like I said, if you if you stop it, you're just like it's lost, it's gone. And I've tried several times um, to reread the series and get back into it to finish it, and never have quite been able to manage it. So okay. I don't know if this is finally going to be the catalyst to make me do it. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think of this I trailer? I I'm really excited about it. It's it's definitely vague on specifics. It's very much like about introducing you to. Um, the very basic background, the very first quest, like the kind of overall general quest that guides the books. Um, but there are so many like other like mini things that happen in the books that this trailer really isn't giving a whole lot away. Okay. Um, but, but it's good in terms of setting up like, this is our main goal. These are the people who are here. Um, if you're new to, um, the books or you're new to like the, the series and you haven't read the books, you know, the, here's like a little guessing game for you. Like who's going to be the hero of the story. Um, so I think it does a great job in like trying to give those of us who know what's going on a sneak peek, but also like invite people in who don't know or who haven't read the books to say like, look, like this is like our new epic thing. Like, look at all these cool characters. Look at, who might be, you know, the the main person. We don't know. You don't know. Come on in and find out. So. Right. Good job. Hmm. Well, so I, you know, me not having any context for it, um, I can't. I, I'm excited for, what's her name? Um, Rosamund Pike. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think she's great. Yeah. But I'm, I'm getting the, there's, more of the because you said okay it's like game of thrones but the ultimate version of that um in a sense and yeah. to me what made game of thrones special is it doesn't it feels very high production value and for a long time it feels like they're really taking it seriously like you yeah. we watch this it feels grounded um and that's something i appreciated about dune as well I feel like there's a lot of things now, more recent. I think it's maybe because of the streaming, everything coming through a streaming service, that it feels more like, like it's made for teenagers. You know, there's mm. just like a rash of shows that are, um, what's that? Is it Highlander or something? Um, Outlander? Had, Outlander, yes. Outlander. And the one we watched now with um, the guy from Westworld, based on the books as well, is on Netflix. Um, and that one really is based on like teen books or whatever. Oh, Shadow and Bone. The Shadow and Bone. Yep. Well, and I mean, to be to be fair, like the the main characters in the Wheel of Time are teenagers too. Yeah. So it's just I'm getting all these fantasy epics that feel like Why? they're. Yeah, they're, <laughs> and they have that sort of soft look to them. They're going to be... Sorry, Alan put a Highlander meme in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Way to go, Alan. Um, I don't know. I'm just... Even... I was even kind of worried about it when Witcher was being advertised and stuff. And it does oh, really? have elements of that, okay. I think. Ultimately, when I watch it, it's like, oh, no, this is hardcore enough, you know? Mm-hmm. But there's just a look, an aesthetic that I don't take quite as seriously. Yeah. Um, the the peak cast members are just too porcelain mm -hmm. and the like all teenagers. And it just it takes me out of thinking about it in a very serious manner. So, yeah, I that's I mean, I think that's fair. I do in remembering some of my readings of the books. um, Boy, that's that's a memory cast for me. Um, but there are several moments in the books where 
um, some of the other main characters make clear that like, oh my God, so like this behavior I'm dealing with right now, it's because they're teenagers or like there's a direct call out of like, you're being a teenager, like grow up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of hoping that that's going to be present in the series. Like I get what you're saying for sure. Um, and I think that they do sort of have to, if they're going to be true to the source material, which I hope they are, um, they do have to like get that very beginning element of like, you know, um, Rosamund Pike playing Moiraine is going to be hurting like, you know, a bunch of squirrely teenagers right. around and she's just so like, this is the worst. But I do hope they evolve beyond that, mm -hmm. you know, fairly quickly. Um, cause yeah, there, there is an element of just like, I don't need like the teenage version of twilight wandering around in like this yeah. middle ages magic setting, you know, it's kind of like, even with, I think with Harry Potter, I was impressed at how it, it could feel like that a lot of times because your protagonists are children, mm -hmm. but very often it, it doesn't, I feel like mm -hmm. it's handled the, the way the cinematography is handled it um it elevates the entire project beyond i don't know this daytime television version of a fantasy epic yeah that as much as i like like again shadow and bone i really enjoyed that show i'm mm -hmm. excited for season two but i don't want everything uh to look like that and I'm yeah just being a trend that i wish wouldn't be there and yeah i, I don't know no, I, I get what you're saying for sure. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, we're probably going to get to this later, but I think it's kind of a, a symptom of like everything being clean. Like we talk about with Cowboy Bebop, like everything looks like very clean and pretty and glamorous. And um, like you said, kind of like tweeny soap mm -hmm. opera E, like it's too stylized or too, I don't know. Yeah, everything's like glamorous somehow yeah. and like Yep. Yeah. Whereas you get to like Game of Thrones. Sure, there were moments, absolutely, especially when you got to like, you know, weddings and party times. Like, yeah, everything looked right. super great. But then you you had like regular scenes where people were in barns, like, you know, look like hey, I'm actually in a barn right now. So Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's well. We'll talk more about it later. I don't want to like keep coming up with new examples and stuff here uh, on repeat. But um, other shows, Boba Fett, Book mm -hmm. of Boba Fett coming out this year on Disney yes. Plus. New trailer drop, original yes. first trailer drop. Um, thoughts there? I liked it. I liked it. I, again, thought they didn't give us a ton but enough like intriguing like there's some elements of like here's a backstory uh, but also like here's a forward story you know what i mean you have not seen mandalorian yet right i haven't seen all of mandalorian no okay. Okay. that's another one that like i started out and chris was like how dare you and i was like you're right that's 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 really my bad like squid, <laughs> squid game i didn't know but mandalorian mm -hmm. that's my bad yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm always so down on Star Wars stuff, so I just will take it as it comes and see see what I think of it um, when it hits. I am always worried about uh, people are like, well, can, why can't can't you just be happy, John? Can't you just be happy about something? <laughs> um, but the idea of Boba Fett, to, in my mind, uh, the his mystique allure throughout the ages now. Mm -hmm. has been uh the how little is known about him mm -hmm. and i always talk about this with wolverine wolverine became less interesting when he found out his past he like calmed down we found out his real name it's like learning that stuff is fun mm -hmm. for the initially but then it's not as interesting anymore takes away and, like the mystique yeah and that's what you run into if you're going to drag the same story on forever. Eventually, you can't just not provide answers. Mm -hmm. And so Boba Fett, you know, I won't say what 
I don't, being you haven't seen all the Mandalorian mm -hmm. and we haven't set up spoilers and stuff for this, I'm not going to give <laughs> my full thoughts on, on him right now, but just to say that I'm, I'm excited, I guess. Um, but I'm also leery about what is Boba Fett's becoming. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. Um, like I said, I feel like the trailer didn't give us a whole lot of what this mm -hmm. was going to be. Um, so perhaps, you know, it'll be kind of a, a moment in time. Let me tell this like one interesting story kind of thing. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't think you can, like you said, focus on a character without getting a at least a little bit into their backstory, um, which they kind of hint at with being like, oh, I heard there's bounty hunter. Well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> you know, but I, but I don't think that that's anything, you know, like shocking or revelatory to fans either. You know what I mean? Right. So. I was trying to see if, um, uh, Favreau's directing this too. I would guess he's oh, not. Also I didn't think doing so. This. Yeah. It's, do they change IMDb? It's been, it looks weird. I can't find any relevant information. Um, but yeah. Let's see. So that'll be interesting having another Star Wars Disney Plus show. Mm hmm. Um, oh, here, Alan's got some a list of directors for episodes. Oh, OK, so it's quite so the doing one episode. Yeah, quite the list of Robert Rodriguez. Oh, fun. Which I believe. So I believe all these people have directed an episode of Mandalorian as well. Sure. Or more than one even. So. OK, only yeah. four episodes listed that's... so far. Uh, I think it's eight. OK, OK. But. I'm just going to like take turns like rotating. I get, yeah, I get maybe, one right? and I get five. You get two and six. Yeah. Well, you have this other story now that's connected to this as well. Yeah. This this new part of the Star Wars universe. Yeah. And I I wrote exactly what I felt about it, which is that I do not know how to feel about this. <laughs> um, because, uh, yeah, the, the upcoming series, Ahsoka, um, it has been confirmed that Hayden Christensen is going to reprise his role as Anakin Skywalker. Um, however, I don't know necessarily if they truly mean Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, sure. You know, it wasn't like that. Like, it's going to be Anakin Skywalker for sure, or like, is it going to be some Vader form? I don't know. They're like. Yep. Nothing other than that has been confirmed other than he's going to be there. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about him coming back. <laughs> I mean, like on the one hand, like redemption, because yeah, like you, you kind of got a raw deal. On the other hand, like, yeah, like it wasn't entirely your fault, but it was a little bit your fault that, you know, Anakin was so whiny and there's so many memes I'm going to blame George Lucas on this. Like as much as I credit him for all the great stuff, he's going to take the fall for this too. I'm <laughs> not going to blame Hayden Christensen. Well, like I said, I don't solely blame him. I just don't mm -hmm. know that like I, it's entirely his fault, but I don't know that it's not some his fault too. And I just, well, I just look. don't know how I feel. Also, like, I don't know how I feel about like, are we going to see his face again? You know what I mean? Like, is it going to be like, you know, a true like Anakin Skywalker? Is it going to be like Vader? Is it a voice? Like, well, yeah, I I have to imagine. And again, to not spoiling anything um, mm -hmm. with the Mandalorian and everything. For those that don't know, Anakin Skywalker was Ahsoka's master. Ahsoka yes. was his mm -hmm. padawan, and so it makes perfect sense. We're going to do a show about Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. to deal with that drama right. between the two of them. And so I would have to imagine there is going to be a, a plethora of flashbacks, memories, mm -hmm. like you say, voice elements, and yep. probably not too much, and, and maybe some Vader or something like that, but probably not too much. I mean, who knows how in-depth the, the 
flashbacks go, I guess. But yeah, I, I'm good. I'm good with this. I, I'm good with this personally. I don't and know. I just I just don't know how I feel about it. I think he will be able to do just fine. Firstly, there are moments in the Star Wars movies that Hayden Christensen does quite well. I think he there has are. I, I shine do, through moments. I do but, find the third prequel film, you know, actually quite good. Mm -hmm. um, and he he is, you know. He, he doesn't like totally fall down. It's obviously the second movie that's just like a pile of, you know, talking before well, about teenage angst. Um, yeah, it's like teenage angst to the max. There's a moment in there, though, where he's going for his mom and stuff. And he does. I, I guess I won't spoil episode two either. Where he's <laughs> like basically going for revenge and he's upset what he's done. And he's really distraught about it. Yeah. And there's a little bit of a like kind of throne room or something Vader theme played in the back. It's mm -hmm. it's a good moment. I buy that moment. Like, I feel like he got worked up on the on, on set, made that happen. Because otherwise, what do you what are you supposed to do with the, you know, I don't like sand. It's so scratchy and rough. He's Not like your me skin, back. you know. <laughs> I that's don't know. like the ultimate like angsty moment but yes yeah not like here everything's smooth <laughs> what was that right there <laughs> that's what he does on her arm he's like oh it's all smooth and he like i yeah, like you yeah, see, yeah, yeah. watch him do that and yeah. everybody's just like ah. yep mm -hmm. <laughs> there's some there's some good quality memes that come out of that mm-hmm you know, there's a lot that go around. People use the example where they're like riding on the back of giant wood ticks in a ridiculous yeah. fashion and falling around in the flowers or whatever. Um, yeah, I yeah. They, those have seen a resurgence recently um, where it's like there's they're the four pictures of them like yeah. sitting in the grass. Yeah, mm -hmm. where she it's says a, something it, and he says something and then she's like, hey, uh oh. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like it promised, right? And then the yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I do I do enjoy that. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's great meme fodder. Like it's mm -hmm. such great like meme content, but yeah, as a movie. Oof. We haven't talked about Star Wars in a while, you know. We haven't, but uh obviously with Ahsoka coming up, we will. Um and I did I did check cuz this was my other like kind of weirdness. Um because I didn't, I didn't know at first if Ahsoka was going to be animated or if it was going to be live action. Mm. Um, so I felt, I felt like differently too about like whether I was going to like hear Hayden Christensen only or if it was going to be like, no, we're going to see him. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting to see him back, like physically, in the sense of like, and also having him play opposite Rosario Dawson as her master mm -hmm. like that that a little like messes with my mind just like in terms of knowing their real ages well i mean look at um in in x-men cable cyclops and gene gray are cable's parents and cable is yeah. usually much older so yeah that's true that's true yeah i mean it's it's often you know like there's a lot of like time elements you know that that comics play with so that you know mm -hmm. um yeah like you can see like gene gray and scott you always see them younger but you always see like cable as older mm -hmm. but uh, or well like you think about doctor who you see river song as an yeah. adult all the time and then she's like with her parents yeah um, and you're just like blah but yeah mm -hmm. okay well we got more star wars coming yep Yep. Um, we'll find out how that all goes. Uh, speaking of space related hijinks, <laughs> it's happening. Um, the Cowie Bebop Netflix show, they released another trailer. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it right away mm -hmm. this is what they should have released the very first time. <laughs> I don't want to see anything else because this was way better in my book than everything we've seen so far. And then, like I was saying in the last episode, how I 
how bad is this show? They can't make a trailer that to make it look good. Yeah. You know, it should be able to at least make it look good, even if it isn't good. Right. So now I feel like we have a trailer that actually makes it look like it might be good or okay. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm hmm. What'd you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, there were still, I thought some like troubling elements, but on the whole, this made me far more confident in the final product for mm -hmm. sure. Um, honestly, like, I don't know that, that anything I looked at in the trailer, I was looking at really John Cho cause I've already like made up my mind that I think he's going to be great. Um, mm -hmm. so it really was like kind of looking at all the other elements, um, you know, like actual production, what is the set going to look like? You know, like what is kind of the cinematography going to be? And yeah, mm -hmm. who are, who are, you know, other characters in the cast? Um, I'm still not sure about, I think it's Danielle Pineda, um, as Faye Valentine. Yeah. I'm still, I don't know. There's still moments when like, there's moments when I feel like she's in it. And there's moments when I feel like she's really playing a character and I can see her playing a character. And I'm not sure if that's like part of the gag or if it's just like, kind of. Potentially, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be like, this is a joke and I'm supposed to be like in on it. Or if it's like, Ooh, whoops. Like, I don't know what happened there. Mm -hmm. Like this was, just, but we just had to roll with it. Cause this was the best take, but yeah. So I'm, I'm like you said, far more confident about the show and a lot happier um, because I always wanted the show to succeed. Um, but oh, I don't. Come on. Obviously, now. we'll have know. to. I, I know you don't. <laughs> but, <I'm, laughs> but I do because, I, like I said, I love John Cho. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, like, want this opportunity for him. Um, or at the very least, I want this to be good enough that he can, like, springboard to something even better. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, this, this made me far more confident about the actual show. Yeah. I mean... It's just much. I'm rewatching it now. It's it's put together <laughs> much better. Um, I had definitely have an issue with some of the special effects. Mm -hmm. it seems really inconsistent. I still Does there the are moments I'm seem like really slow to you. Um, you know, like the fight scenes when they're like I don't know. There was like one a couple different moments when like there was kind of like up close interaction for fight scenes, mm. and it just felt like we're doing the choreography. You know what I mean? Like mm. there was like a punch and a grab and a thing. And it just felt a little dance movie rather than sure. like we're having a fight. Yeah. I'm still not confident. I just, if this is the first thing I would you just have felt seen better. This, I, yeah. If this is the first thing I would have seen. I would have been like, well, you know, may, maybe, you know, maybe it's going <laughs> to be, you know, despite like all the things I can pick at. Yeah. When I watch this anyways, like, it feels more like Cowie Bebop than the mm -hmm. other things that didn't at all. And mm -hmm. I also recognize a lot of the characters or storylines that they're apparently taking from the original show as well. Mm -hmm. Recognize some villains and some moments. And there's one in there that I was thinking, please don't put this person mm -hmm. in the show. And they did. So that's a risky move for them to take. So, okay. Um, Pierre Lafou, I believe, is his name. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I did. I, I did finally start like sitting down and watching like Cowboy Bebop. So ah oh, oh, Andrea, good job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it only took me how many years? <laughs> uh, are you are you watching English or Japanese? Um, I think I watched the first one. In Japanese. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've never watched it in Japanese. Okay. It's definitely a show that I, uh, when I first saw it, it was in English, and I fell in love with those voice actors for mm -hmm. those roles. And so, yeah, I've, it's one that I fully support in English. Okay. Which was kind of a rarity, especially back when, in early 90s when this came out. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot that I would be that that I would want someone to take seriously that I would suggest or be good with them listening to the English tracks. But mm -hmm. so, yeah, 
All right, I some some renewed hope for me. I mean, <laughs> renewed hope. Um, kind of switching to video games now. Elden Ring gameplay mm -hmm. was released. We can breeze through some of these or linger however we want to go. Yeah. Um, I am typically very bad at Soulsborne kind of games. And so I always want to like these games. They aesthetically speak to me, especially like Bloodborne. Mm -hmm. But I am terrible at them. And people say get good and that is what I would need to like focus. I would need to focus and put the time in to really do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I have not yet. So I'm very intrigued by this game. It's mm -hmm. from like the minds behind Souls games and also um, George R. R. Martin. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be good. It looks cool. It's all anybody seems to care about. I feel like when we would, you know, be checking out game showcases earlier in the mm. year, it was always like the first, like, all I want to see is Elden Ring. Where's Elden Ring? Like, you know, so I hope, uh, I hope this gameplay like satisfied some people because I, so. I just, I just feel like there was just like an overwhelming uh, amount of people who are just like, that's all I'm here for is Elden Ring. And it just like was all anybody cared about. So I, I mean, I thought it looked great, but I also haven't been like, you know, following it around and being like, Oh my God, I just, I need it. You know, show me more Elden Ring. So. Hidetaka Miyazaki says Alan. So mm, it must okay. be the, the lead lead designer. Um, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I haven't heard the online reaction either. I haven't looked, but mm -hmm. I'm guessing from this, it's um, it's what people were looking for. My Good. worry is it got delayed until February, which right. is when Horizon Forbidden West is coming out. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take away attention from my game, <laughs> Horizon Forbidden West. Um. So I'm not super pumped about that. Sure. I mean, ultimately, Horizon is a much broader appeal kind of game. And so theoretically, it should sell way more than mm -hmm. because as much as people rave about this Dark Souls games and stuff of Bloodborne, they're really not big sellers because yeah. they are difficult for a specific audience kind of thing. Yeah, very niche. Right. But the press is going to cover this game like you wouldn't believe. And yeah. so that just may make a Horizon Forbidden West be unnoticed by a few people that maybe would have seen otherwise. Sure. Maybe a little less successful. Yeah. So um, speaking of Horizon and uh, PlayStation, <laughs> this PlayStation had a state of play on Wednesday. I really like don't have much to say about it other than it was pretty meh. Um, and <laughs> I just think that everybody, everybody really needs to realign their expectations for all these things. We've talked about that now, but it's clear that these game companies are particularly Microsoft and PlayStation. Now it seems are concerned about being quiet for too long. Mm -hmm. And so they just have to have these little updates and it's odd because we I think reasonably so when we're going to bother setting the date for a live event that they welcome you all in to watch it once that there should be a, a higher standard of content mm -hmm. and we're not getting that yep. clearly we're getting like a blog post worth yep. of you know a trailer drop kind of thing for things we've already seen and that seems to be the way it's going to go forward so I think I'm not going to go out of my way to tune into these things live anymore. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah, I unfortunately agree with you. I feel like that was that was a lot of our early commentary when we, you know, kind of in the summer were attending a lot of these live events and there was like, oh, like summer gaming events, like, you know, you know, look at all these live things that are happening and we would tune in and be like Okay, well, the first one, great. And then the second one was like, oh, I've seen like 75% of this content. Third one, oh, I've seen 
like 60% of this content. Oh, I've seen like 85% of this content. Yep. Fine. I get it now. Like you're just, you're just not, you know, like you said, not reinventing the wheel. You're just like kind of refreshing and then maybe adding one or two things. And it's across the board, across gaming companies. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now I will say that PlayStation is also doing good things where, Mm -hmm. um, the Halo released their campaign kind of re-reveal. Um, so there's a lot of hype and anticipation um, around this. Yes. I saw it, and I was dramatically underwhelmed. <laughs> I know there was a lot of people there quite happy, but I think they just got to play the multiplayer beta. That felt really good to them. And there's just a bunch of Halo fans that, yeah, that looks cool. Because... Mm-hmm. This was the campaign re-reveal. Like, sell me on some story. Right. Give me, like, this mix of cinematic and gameplay to let me know we're getting the, an epic Halo story. Mm-hmm. Instead, they're, like, pe- just, like, little pieces of story and more look at how our campaign unfolds. You can go wherever you want on this big map and yeah. take down these, like, control po- points or whatever. And... I, I was just very underwhelmed, just mm-hmm. not. It looked fine. It looked fine. Like I, the Halo games, the, it's going to look. I think all the Halo games have looked good, you know, mm-hmm. but you're, I don't know. You're, it's just fast paced shooting games aren't really ones you generally appreciate the visuals all that much anyways, I think. But mm-hmm. I don't know. At the same time, PlayStation dropped uh like dev diary on their blog post about horizon forbidden west and they showed a little new a little bit in more gameplay on there and and talk kind of in depth about some stuff and that's the kind of thing that was simple in effect no one was expecting it mm-hmm. you don't have to tune in live so you get your hopes up or whatever it's yep. just there and it showed up at the exact same time as uh as the hail campaign and some people think it's maybe a little bit of a like uh I don't know, jab, slight, because the, what they showed at of Horizon looked way better than Halo. Sure. Like gra- just graphically, sure. and vastly more impressive than Halo. So maybe it was a little like, oh well, yeah, you got a Halo game. Well, wait another month or two and you'll, <laughs> you'll have this game that's actually beautiful and feels next gen yeah. versus this kind of big sandbox thing with, uh, yeah. I think you, I mean, I think you really hit on something that um, so much of this stuff I feel like is a disappointment because we see it live. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's so many live events and live events feel like this should be like, oh my God, bombshell information or like we're seeing something brand new and um, or like, like we saw two seconds of a clip earlier. Now we're getting like 10 minutes plus gameplay in it, live events need to be something epic. And I think that's exactly where all of these gaming companies are making mistakes. Like yep. release a stream, like or release like a, a, you know, pre-recorded video or whatever on your stream and just be like, Hey, we recorded a thing. Check it out sometime. You know, like don't make yep. it a live event. And I think people would be far happier, actually, with, you know, the content that you're producing, even if it's like 90% of what they've seen before, just being able to watch it in their own time. Yep. I mean, people consume these live events via IGN or official PlayStation, YouTube or whatever anyways. So immediately after live event, those sites drop all the trailers we just saw in the live event. So just drop all the trailers. Yeah. You're subscribed to the thing. You'd see them all show up and you could just, oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, I've already seen that. I don't need to watch that one, you know? Mm-hmm. And some people were saying maybe they, like Sony will make a deal and they'll be obligated then to show a game at a state of play a certain number of times or something like that. Sure. And so they make this deal and now the they have to put the game in there. Like, mm-hmm. how many times do we need to see a Five Nights at Freddy's thing 
Mm -hmm. The kids of the Gen, what are they, Gen Xers now or Z, whatever they are, they already play this stuff. They're going to keep playing it. Right. They're, they're, you don't need to show them this thing, okay? Because everybody else doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm warming I up hear to you. my rants. I'm not on my <laughs> rant yet. I warm, I warm up. You, we've still we've still got a couple of things to discuss. So I mean, you're you're on your no, way. I, I, yeah. I told I mean, you. I told you. All you needed to do was just like bring it up and have like a sentence or two before you could mm -hmm. just like get into it. I mean, are there any rants that you want to to give Andrea? And you're <laughs> fired up about. Um, not anything we're talking about today, but you'll know. You'll know when I do. Okay. All right. I just wanted to give you the chance if you really like think of something, you know, that I is a must rant before I like and maybe <laughs> maybe I'll be very calm. Maybe this won't be rants. I don't know. <laughs> So we're sticking on the video gaming topic here and mm -hmm. switching to the other. Well, I guess we could have done that way around, but we're talking about Nintendo for a bit. Sure. So. When Nintendo announced during their Animal Crossing thing, kind of surprisingly that, hey, we're doing this Nintendo online expansion pass mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And they mailed the prices we 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 talked about a little bit and like, oh, yeah, this looks cool. Looks good. All this stuff releasing these controllers, you know? Yeah. Meanwhile, the internet melted down. Oh, boy. Twitter and the gaming verse freaked out. Oh, my God, Nintendo. What are you doing? These prices are ridiculous. I even yes. heard, had someone tell me, like, God, they got to fix that pricing. And I'm like, do you know what the pricing is? Because it's not expensive, I, I pulled up the Nintendo Switch Online pricing. So if you want to get the regular Nintendo Online and mm -hmm. you're a, a, you're the only person interested, you can get a year for $20, okay? It's not $20 a month, yeah. it's a year, okay? If you want the Online Plus Expansion Pack, it's $50 a year, okay? So... Okay. Not e so not even one full price game. Um, and so that's a cup of coffee a month, a cheap cup of coffee a month. Um, you can also do the, if you have a family plan, which, which we do, mm -hmm. Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack family membership is $80 for 12 months. So that's up to eight people. Eight people can share one online membership for $80 for the entire year. My television Hulu bill is $80 a month. Yeah. Okay. Now, it's, I understand because immediately a bunch of complaints came out about Nintendo's poor online service. These to me are two separate things almost. I agree. Because, I agree. yes, it's the 21st century and Nintendo, you should be able to have your friends list. And you should be able to message those friends and you should be able to see their real names and you should be able to invite them to a chat and a party and have voice chat with a Bluetooth headset or a wired one, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. You should be able to invite that person to play Smash Bros online and then have a relatively lag free experience and a good time. Mm -hmm. And all of those things are basically not there, mm -hmm. which is a shame. And a Nintendo needs to fix that stuff because it's pathetic. But when you're talking about this price, you can forget all that stuff. Pretend none of that's there. You're buying these games. You're, you're buying access to play a ton of classic games. Mm -hmm. And if that's not interested to, interesting to you, then I get it. If you're like, I just want to pay for the online service so I can chat with my friends and game online and for cloud backups, then I get you being really upset mm -hmm. because why would you want to pay anything for how poor Nintendo's online service is in that case? Get that. But I have a list of the games available on Nintendo Switch Online and I couldn't dare read them all. There is, I mean, dozens. So when you look at regular... Um, 
nin regular Nintendo games, between Super Nintendo games, um, and now the Nint Nintendo 64 stuff. I know there's been some issues, I guess, with performance. Again, we're on the performance side for Nintendo 60 game and 64 games and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that I'm confident they'll they'll have fixed or whatever. But um, and they tease new games that are coming to the service. They added Genesis, and we know that clearly they're going to keep adding Game Boy games and adding on all, all that stuff. Now, if they release these new prices, uh, a lot of people were expecting, oh, it'll be $5 more or $10 more for this, maybe. And it's like almost double the price. Well, do you expect Nintendo to change the pricing structure every time they add a new system? Mm -hmm. I mean, they added DLC now for Animal Crossing. To me, this, and maybe I'm reading this wrong, to me, this is clearly indicating that they are intending to make more games a little bit more of a subscription service. Because already there's Iro Warriors with a DLC pass. Right. Smash Bros. had DLC pass. All these things have a DLC pass. Well, what if you didn't have to do that? You could still buy that individually if you don't want to do the online thing. But what if that was just in your online thing? Now, do you think they're going to add to the price of this every time they add an expansion pass? I wouldn't think so. If they increased the price by $10 and then they added Sega Genesis games, Nintendo 64 games, they keep adding those, and they added um, the Animal Cross expansion, as soon as they add a few more things, they're going to have to increase it by $5 again. Mm -hmm. And then by another $5. And then you're going to have be people worse. that don't know the pricing of their freaking online service because well, it be keeps going up. Well, and it would be worse because there's nothing people hate more than a price increase. So you'd rather do right. it all at once than yep. keep being like, oh, my God, it increased again. Like, that's that's the quickest way to, like, alienate people, really. Right. Yep. So if I will come on here and tell everybody that I am totally wrong, if they keep bumping <laughs> up the price... Within, yeah, within for the sure. Next two years, they keep raising the price every time they add things. Then, for yes, sure. they're doing it wrong. But if it's what it seems to me, they've set a new pricing structure that we're going to have for a few years and we're going to yep. keep getting new game content. I mean, and and more Genesis and and Nintendo 64 games yeah. like I just can't believe the bitching about this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not you're not paying one hundred dollars a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just I don't know. I and that's no, not I, to again to say they need to fix their online infrastructure. That's a, they do need to do that, um, which is yeah, mostly separate. I mm -hmm. like you said, I get that people like paying this amount of money are like there are some basic features that right. I would expect to have. I get that for sure. Like for any amount of money, you should be able to have these features. Yeah. Um. And if they don't fix that, then yeah, this is this is a total, well, not a total, but like it, a little bit of a scam. It, it doesn't make <laughs> the online service not worth it, even if there are parts of it that parts of it that aren't working right. well. I mean, it may good. make, like you said, it may make it not worth it for some people. Yeah, if, if you don't, if, if like, you don't care about retro games at all. Yes. Yep. Then yeah, Nintendo Online, but even then. You the t the twenty dollars for a year is worth it for the cloud backup, mm -hmm. the cloud saves, and it's like I oh, would think so. Yeah, it's like but. some other people have free cloud backup. Okay, I get it, you know, but clearly Nintendo needs to invest in their online infrastructure. Give them the freaking twenty dollars a year so they mm -hmm. can hopefully make that better. Right, uh, other things better, but I don't. come at me. It's fine. It's just <laughs> I feel like some people some people have cooled down it because the 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 ridiculous part is most of these people complaining either don't like Nintendo, they mm -hmm. just don't play Nintendo stuff, well, or they're gonna buy this anyways. Yeah. They're gonna buy it anyways because they guess what? They actually do want to play these old games. They mm -hmm. are interested in playing these old games and playing the new Animal Crossing expansion. So mm -hmm. just Which is out now, uh, isn't it? It is out. Yep. It's out. Um, Today? Ashley's been playing it some. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. like an update released early or whatever. But um, yeah, I know it's officially going and stuff today. Okay. Ashley has built 
two islands for guests for nice so nice yeah <sighs> okay i <laughs> think i know I've, i i'm Take welcome to push back on it i just i was just floored by everybody freaking out just, yeah i mean i i hadn't seen any of that so i'm i'm getting it secondhand but i'm honestly like super shocked when i think about like what I pay for streaming services and yeah. you know, like other, like our Xbox, our Xbox live just rolled in and it's, I mean, not that bad at all. It's like 80 bucks for the year or whatever. And it's just like, of course we're going to pay that. Like Chris looked at me, he's like, well, we could cancel it if you want to. I'm like, no, it's super reasonable. Of course we're going to pay mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think well, Nintendo is like anywhere near as on like anywhere near as pricey, but also like, I don't know. Yep. I guess not as great of an experience, but also like the price reflects that then. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like Xbox, I think every Xbox owner should have Game Pass Ultimate. Mm -hmm. You just if you play a variety of games or share a system with someone, you should have Game Pass Ultimate because it mm -hmm. comes with Xbox Live Gold, gets your online yep. cloud stuff and all those games, so it's just worth it. But but yeah, but that's a lot more money mm -hmm. than what Nintendo's asking for here. So all right, so no one can call me a fanboy here, all right? Because I am been defending. <laughs> I, I've been defending everyone here. Normally, I've been defending Xbox these days or whatever. I just said mm -hmm. the Halo campaign looked boring. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go into PlayStation, and just as I say, every every Xbox owner should have Game Pass. I think every PC owner should have Game Pass Ultimate too, but um. PlayStation now gets a lot of crap. Um, and I under, I've talked about this before, but I just saw something that was an update to PlayStation Remote Play that reminded me of this service again and stuff like that. <laughs> One, yes, historically, Game Pass gets new games way faster. Mm -hmm. PlayStation now is has largely been older games, mm -hmm. um, games that maybe a lot of people aren't thinking about anymore or aren't interested in playing as much, whatever. So I understand that. But there are a lot, there are a shit ton of games on PlayStation now. Um, let's see. Um, I have the list here. But it's again incredibly long. They can't just list it all. They have to. You get to click on every letter of the alphabet to see <laughs> which games are in it. And they have a lot of classic PlayStation things on there. I mean, we're uh -huh. just talking Bloodborne. Bloodborne is on there. Okay. Um, let's see, Bioshock and Bioshock Two and Th Infinite are on there. There's some Castlevania games. Um, and these games rotate in and, in and out, but Infamous, Iconoclast, Metal Slug, I mean, whatever. It goes on and on and on and on. Um, I think this is a good value yet. And they updated the PlayStation Remote Play app to now let you use your mobile data to stream games from your system. So Xbox yeah, does that. this too. Where cool. you, yeah, where you can basically, if you have your system have this enabled some sleep mode or whatever you can be wherever else in the world. And if you have mm -hmm. a really good internet connection, you can play your games on your phone. Yeah. PlayStation has been doing this for a while, but now they're letting you use your mobile data to do it. And this is a lot like everybody's talking about Xbox mobile gaming, X cloud, uh, as it was called. And honestly, every time I've tried that, it's been kind of crap. Like, mm -hmm. It's been laggy and not very good. And I've had a far better experience, shockingly, just streaming a game on PlayStation Now oh, um, sure. from, from my console, anyways. And um, so I just wanted to give, I, I, know they're, I know they're behind in ways, but Sony is not the same company as Microsoft. Microsoft is like a couple trillion dollar company. Sony is a fraction of that. Uh, Mark has Brownlee put in perspective the other day, like, Apple's AirPod business alone, just their headphone business, is bigger than the entire Sony company. <laughs> All of Sony. That's, a, that's it, a great like comparison. That's a great yeah, like analogy just there. Earbuds and shit yeah. from Apple makes 
way more money than all of Sony that does televisions and radios and phones and gaming systems and games and movies and music and television mm-hmm. and, and at home insurance, you know, like everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're not the same company. They can't just start paying everybody to put all kinds of games day and date on their mm-hmm. system, on their service. So I don't know. Just everybody take it easy. PlayStation Now is a good service. They've been yeah. doing game streaming for a while. They're adding to it. Yes, I think they need to change the way they promote it. You can you can use PlayStation Now on your computer too. Like this is again, Microsoft is getting a lot of credit for like game streaming and play your games all over the place or whatever. PlayStation is doing some of this stuff too. They mm-hmm. just don't talk about it as much. And being right. in the lead position. It's not as fun, I guess, to talk about them versus like rooting for the underdog and all the new stuff they're doing. Mm-hmm. So that's it. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure you don't have more in there? I think so. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I think I think I'm good. I mean, I will no. get me going if someone really disagreed. So if you really disagree with me and you got something something is i mean i gave this example on the podcast a long time ago i wanted to see how playstation now worked and right. so i went and i tried just streaming prey which is ironically now a microsoft game <laughs> and um i just thought i'd try it out and i was immediately very interested in the game like it kind of hooked right. me in that little bit of instant play i didn't have to download it i just started trying it mm-hmm. and being it was so cool i decided to download it to get the like full resolution experience and then i played it all the way through it's one of my favorite games ever so that's the kind of thing that that instant streaming option does and game pass mm-hmm. does not have that you right. can't sit on your xbox and right. like oh i want to maybe try what's doom like and then just stream it for a bit and if you like it, then download the full thing. Which is so. like, honestly, the most brilliant thing ever. Mm-hmm. Like you said, because it because it I mean, yeah, you're going to get maybe the the like, you know, couple people who would just like, oh, I'm just interested enough in this game. I just I guess I'll go ahead and buy it. But honestly, like on the whole, you do so much better to let people have like that little sneak preview. Yeah, because there's because I'm I'm one of the people who's like oh, I'm going to decide against it because I don't know and I don't know if I'm going to like it. So I want to be more sure about something before I yep. buy it. So well, you know, even if it's free with a service, um, right. there's a barrier of entry of, oh, well, this game is 40 gigabytes. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess if I want to try that, I'm like, he, I'm, you're sitting down. I want to play yep. a game now. Right. Well, that's not happening now then. That's exactly. going to happen later. So you and I'm not interested later. Like, right. it, like you're gonna play something now. N- like seventy-five to eighty percent of the time, I would say, like I'm in the moment. I need it now. Like I have the time now. And then if it's gonna be like, oh, I have to download this. Uh, later comes around, and I'm either not interested, I've moved on to something else, or I have something else to do. Yeah, and I just forget about it. Yep. I mean, the games media sits there and praises, um like Microsoft for their push for backwards compatibility and and keeping Mm -hmm. a catalog that way. And I think that stuff is great. It is. Yeah. But, and then they, they chastise PlayStation for not doing that well, but they're saying how great it is that Microsoft is doing this game streaming stuff and so forward thinking, well, a ton of these old games, PlayStation two games, I think PlayStation one games, PlayStation 3 games, they're on this service. Now, PlayStation 3 ones, you can only stream. That's the, Mm. like, there are some games that you can't download for that. You know, you can only stream. But if streaming is the future, and especially in these older, lower fidelity games, you know, they're going to stream fine. Uh, Once you have a, you know, if you have a decent internet connection, you know, Ape Escape is on these. I remember when Ape Escape first came out, Mm -hmm. uh, that Mm -hmm. looked really interesting and i never played it other than just sitting there in the store playing the demo you know sure. when you have time or whatever well now i can go and i can play ape escape 2 if i want <laughs> and it's instant i just can play right it. right so i don't know that's like uh um 
Renato, like if he was here, I want to see him tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> so, all right. Well, anything else? I, you know, is my my rant uh, rant reasonable here? Um, I think so, but okay. You know, I mean, okay. I also I also thought like our whole deal on uh, you know Nintendo pricing was reasonable. So, and apparently mm -hmm. it's not. So, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Come at me, bro. We might both be wrong. Yep. Oh, I thought of something else. I'm not going to launch into it <gasps> next time. <laughs> next time. Um, yep. All oh, right, that's, we'll... a, that's a little tease for our viewers. Next <laughs> time, John's got something. <laughs> yep. Well, if um, if you are a fan of this kind of content, yeah, you should definitely stick around. We do these shows weekly. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be talking Dune coming up soon. We talk Star Wars in this. We're going to have Star Wars shows to talk about. All kinds of things that I'm sure you're interested in as well as us that we are going to discuss in depth. So stick around. Um, follow us here on Twitch or YouTube mm -hmm. or your favorite podcast directory. Um, take your pick. Please leave us a review, share, subscribe, all those kinds of things. I was saying before, we have to type in the entire podcast on the rocks <laughs> to find us. Well, if you share and like and all these things, eventually it will just come up. It'll just right? populate because... It'll just know. Yeah, it knows. So help us it's out. <laughs> it's so um, thoughtful just bring you your favorite content yeah right exactly yeah hit the low notification bell i gotta get better at all these like what everybody's got to do is to know <laughs> um killing flower thank you for our theme song you should mm -hmm. check out their content on instagram youtube and spotify also my brother-in-law lucas333 that's lucas with a k you can find him on twitch usually monday Wednesdays and Fridays. So give him a follow. And um, yeah, that's been Popcast on the Rocks, episode 81. Thank you for hanging out with us, Thick King. Thank <laughs> you, Andrea, for being here as always. And we'll see you all next time. Sounds good. Cheers, everybody.